Hi and welcome to another session from Blender Insight. This time I will show you how you can create your own normal map procedurally instead of using vector bump. And I will start right away. So we create a new material. Uh, since I'm working with Blender 2.8, I get this as default here. And I will first show you the vector bump way. So I will work with texture uh, like brick in this case. So shift A and then you have the brick texture. So texture, brick texture, and I have it. Uh, now I select it. Uh, then I will use the vector bump to show you how it will look. So shift A again and vector and uh, we have the bump. And this is the normal way to work with uh, height when working with procedural texture. So now I just put the factor in here, put that into height, and I put the normal into the normal here. And if we look what happens now, uh, you can see you get these bumps here. Since we're working with Blender 2.8, this is already UV unwrapped. So I press Shift A again and select an input for the texture. So input, texture coordinate, and then I use UV here. So if I put UV into the vector, I get it a little bit more straight and it looks a little bit nicer. However, if I now go close and I can use invert here, you can see that the lines here, I can take down the strength a bit, it doesn't matter so much. Uh, they are rather sharp here in the edges. And what I often uh, is lacking when I'm trying to do something really, really good is uh, the ability to make these soft. I can cheat a bit using the Morpho smoothness here, but as you can see, it's still very, very sharp lines. So I was thinking, how, uh, how should I do to make these a little bit uh, softer? And I was thinking about uh, using a normal map and how to produce it and so on. I uh, found out a way. Uh, I will discuss a little bit about the normal map. The normal map is uh, built from uh, red, green and blue. And the blue color is the height of what you're going to see. And the red is uh, how much you will see from the x-axis, the shadows and so on coming from the x-axis, so from left to right and so on. And the green, uh, that is used for the y-axis from the top to bottom. So what I was thinking is may, it may be possible to just do some slight changes in the vector here for x and y to produce a normal map and it went rather well and I will show you how to do it. So before we continue I will take and do some input values here. So I do like this, I take shift A and now I use input and value. I take it up here and I do copy so shift D twice so I get three different input values here. And it's trying to sneak away in some way. So uh, to understand what they are, I will change here. And if you don't have this window up, you just press N twice and then you get it. And in the label here, I can write, as we see here, scale. So I start with writing scale here, pressing enter. And then you have scale here. And the next one I will use for mortar size here. So I just press size like this. And for the last one, I use the smooth net. So I put in, in this case, smooth and press enter. And I look at this and I can, I think I will do some change more. I will set the offset to zero. So they are like the same. And I will set this to one and this to one. Then we get about the same height and width. And I will also change the scale to like 10 or something. And now it will look uh, something like this and you still have these sharp edges here. So now I just connect it but I can write those value in here. So scale 10, uh, size 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0, 2 and 0. Uh, smoothness uh, 0 0.8 I think it looks like, 0 0.8 here. 
and then I just connect them. So smooth to smooth, size to size, and scale to scale. And now you know exactly how this looks here. And, and I will copy it. So Shift D and copy twice. Uh, one and two. So now we have two. I will minimize it because now we don't need to see all the details. They are already in here. And then we can just do exactly the same with this, which means that I now take the scale here. I take the size here and I take the smooth here. Now that is fixed and then I just make that small as well. It's easy to work with them. And I do the same for the last one here. So now I put in scale to scale and size to size and smooth to smooth. Okay, so now are these three exactly the same? I will use this one for a red color. I will use this one for a green color. I will not use this one for blue color. I will use this one to get the brick texture color in the right place when placing what we have in these here. Uh, so we take it step by step. Uh, what I will do now is I will separate what we have in the UV. So I go to Shift A again and convert, and there we have a separate. So separate X Y Z is what I will use. So I take that one and I will use it, use that for red and for green. So I do one copy, Shift D again, and sooner or later I will combine it. So I can take Shift A again convert and then I have combine XYZ like this and I do a shift D to copy that one as well. Now I have these two and I will do some math between them. Before I do that I can just connect this one saying this will be red and this one saying this will be green and the last one is already connected without any changes and as I said I will not use that, uh, use that as blue but you will see how it works. Uh, now I will put in some math between here, so shift A again, and then convert, and then you have the math here. So select the math, put it in here, and for red, I will use X. So I put in X here, and X here, and for Y, I just let it go through, and for Z, I just let it go through, so it looks like this. I do almost the same thing with the next one, so I just copy this, and not clamp it, I just copy it, so shift D copy and uh, in this case I will let X go through but I will use Y so I put that in here and I put that in here so we use this one and then I just let Z go through so and now I can connect both of these to the UV so we have it here like that and now I will start with combining everything here so I will take another converter, so Shift A, and in this converter you can see uh, that I have something called uh, Combine RGB. So if I use that one, I can take the factor I get from the brick texture here to the red. I can take the factor that I get from this brick texture to green. But as I said before, I will not use this for blue. I will use a static value here. So I put like 0 0.5 to that. And now I will change the bump here. Instead of using bump, so I take this away, I will now use a normal map as input. So Shift A, Vector, and here we have a normal map. Put that in here, put that to normal, and use the image output here into the color for the normal map. So. Now you can see we get some lines here as well, but it doesn't look 100% okay. That we can change. Uh, what we need to do is just a slightly small change, not this big thing here. So what I will do here is put it 0 0.0005, something like that. And I will do the same here. So I put 0 0.0005 like this and see what happens 
we get smooth edges. That is exactly what we wanted. We can control these in different ways. We can change the strength of the normal map, as you can see, works wonderful. You can also change the value for the blue here. Does it also work? And the value here, it's so sensitive. So if you want to change it, it's easy to do some math as well here, some more math. So what I will do now is press Shift A again and select the new math, convert the math here, uh, where I will put an input here. So I just put input uh, and then I put a value. So I can put in a value here and then I use this to multiply that value. And since this is so small, I put in like thousand here. And then it will be very easy to change the value. So I now put in this into, sorry, I don't put multiply, I put divide, of course. I want to create a very small value. So divide by thousand, nothing else. I was talking rubbish before. So put that in here and you can also put that value into this here using the same value. And now it's easy to change these in a much easier way. Doesn't have to be so specific. And now you can see it looks really nice. If you take too much, it looks very distorted. But if you go close, it's like merging together in a very nice way. So there you can find exactly the value that you want to. Uh, so what should we use this for? This is the color of the bricks. We don't want them moved. We want them to be on the original place. So here it's just to put the color here to the base color here. So if I just take this one into this, then I get the colors on the right place. And right now we have rather boring colors. So change those to like red here and perhaps uh, I don't know something more brownish here and this may be like I don't know light gray something looks really really nice doesn't look like a brick or something it's so shiny but you can see what I I'm after here now you have these very very soft lines you can of course still control the smoothness here if you want to and get it all the way in here if you want to or take it out. You can change the size of these and you can see the lines follow along in a good way. Change the scale or whatever. Everything is very easy to change. And with this uh, connections that you have done, everything will work very, very nicely. And if you want to do some uh, disturbance some noise here well then just put it into the math here so let's put in some noise just to show you so I take now a noise texture so shift a texture and noise texture put that in here now this value was thousand so I take a math node copy this one I can use that and multiply this with thousand instead and put in the factor here that means that now I will work with a factor of thousand put this in here and to make it work really good I can also have an input uh, with texture coordinate and in this case I will use the object here could be hard to see something since uh, the scale is rather low so if I put that to like 50 instead now you can see how everything is going to be distorted distorted and I can change thing here and make thing look really yeah you can see distorted on the edges here and what I can do more when I have built this uh, normal map is that I still can use the vector bump uh, like a layer atop of this without any problem because the output here is normal and we have an input in the vector bump for normal so I can just put the vector bump between here so just shift A and then I use vector and vector bump and I just squeeze it in here normal to normal and normal to normal and nothing has changed it's still exactly the same image it will not distort this in any way 
but I can put in a texture in the height here if I want to. Yes, for fun, we can put in like, uh, I don't know, like a Voronoi or something. So texture and Voronoi texture like this. And now I just take the factor to the height here. And as soon as I do that, you can see that, yes, I get a lot of uh, height from the bumps here. And I can also decrease it a little bit, perhaps do it like invert or something uh, and even if I invert it you can see still that this uh, motor thing that I've done with the, with the dolmen wrap is still going in even if I change the invert here so uh, it's easy to combine things using a bump map using normal map just by having this in here where you can uh, see if I can find it, <laughs> where I can change some of the X and uh, some of the Y. And you don't have to use uh, brick texture, you can use any texture to get uh, fantastic flexible patterns that really looks uh, to be in 3D, even if you're working in 2D and working with uh, procedural noise or nodes. So uh, I hope that this will be uh, used for you, and if you like what you see, uh, want to see when I'm doing something new, then don't forget to subscribe and I will see you then. Uh, have a nice day. Bye!